Hey y'all, welcome to Games for Young Minds. I'm Kent here with a game called Blockus. Now, Blockus is my favorite board game, so I'm really excited to talk to you about it. As you might imagine, I've got a lot to say about this game. I'm not gonna fit it all in one video. So today, I'm just gonna show you how to play the game and give you a few quick questions you can ask your kids along the way. And then in a future video, I'll show you some of the amazing variations and puzzles and activities you can do with the pieces. So, let's check it out. So Blockus was designed as a four-player game, but there's a two-player variation that's just as much fun. I'll show you that in a second. So each player gets a bunch of these square-based Tetris-y looking pieces. And you'll notice some of them actually do look like Tetris pieces. They've got the four squares, but some of them have one, two, three, or even five squares on them. And these might look familiar. Uh, they're actually right behind me in red. I love them so much, I just had to put them up. Anyway, the goal of the game is to get rid of all of your pieces. So how do you do that? Well, like I said, you could teach this game to a four-year-old. You just take one piece and place it in the corner. You gotta put a square all the way here in the corner, and then the next player just takes a piece and does the same. And you go around in a loop just like that. Now the game returns to the first player, and they grab a new piece, and they can place this piece anywhere they want to as long as it touches an existing piece at the corner. So they could place it right here because these corners touch. They could flip it around and place it like this, or like this because these corners touch, or they could even go like this. As long as corners are touching, it's a valid move. Now the one thing you can't do is place it so that sides touch. So no two sides can ever be connected. If you ever put down two blockus pieces and it looks like one big blockus piece, you know you've done it incorrectly. So anyway, once you place yours, then everybody else goes around and places theirs. And play just continues until you either run out of space or run out of tiles. So Blockus sort of has two phases. You've got this first phase, it's kind of exploratory. You're putting down pieces and kind of staking out your turf. But then as space starts to run out and pieces start bumping into each other and you start to realize, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna get rid of all these pieces, the game gets really strategically complicated and really interesting from a mathematical perspective. So what I'm gonna do is kind of fast forward to that point in the game and then we'll talk about it. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're running out of space, and you might be looking at this and thinking, oh man, blue, I mean, you got a little space here and a little space here, but you're pretty much out of luck. But because of the rules of Blockus, you can actually hop over these red pieces and place a new blue piece here. Because as long as it's touching an existing blue piece at the corner, Corner, that's a valid move, which means you can then hop into this territory and you can weave your pieces into your opponent's territory while they're weaving their pieces into yours. And this is when the game gets so strategic and so competitive and also so interesting from a mathematical perspective. Because at the beginning of the game, you can pretty much grab a piece at random and you'll figure out a way to connect it to your existing pieces. But once you get here, you're gonna have to go through and look at all of your pieces and say, okay, which of these pieces can actually fit right here? And yes, you could sit here and exhaustively test them one by one, but what your child is more likely to do is develop their spatial reasoning. And by that I mean, look at a piece and mentally rotate it to imagine a way that it might fit into this space. So they might take a piece like this, and. Initially, the way I'm holding it, it's not going to fit. But if you imagine rotating it, it's still not gonna work. It's still not gonna work. Oh, there we go. If I place it like that, then it works. And I can also hop into this area. And that type of visualizing and rotating objects in space is such a powerful bit of spatial reasoning for your kids. And this, of course, will pay off when they're in geometry class. But honestly, anytime your child has to visualize a physical representation of a math idea, spatial reasoning is gonna to come to their rescue. I mean, spatial thinking is not the exact same as mathematical thinking, but they're so mutually supportive that I think it's really valuable for kids to play games that help them develop both. Okay, so your child is thinking three moves ahead and using all that spatial reasoning, and it's going great, but at a certain point they are gonna run out of room. I mean, it's really hard to get rid of all the pieces. So let's say that blue does run out of room. Well, then the other three players just keep going and skip blue's turn, and then it'll get down to two players and finally down to one, and they'll play out all the pieces that they can, and then everyone will have a few pieces left over. At that point, you just take your remaining pieces and count up the number of squares that you have on them. So this would be three squares, two squares, and five squares. So that would be a total of 10. My score would be 10 for this game. And just like in golf or shut the box, the person with the lowest score is the winner. 
Now, like I said, there's a two player variation and it's very simple. Basically just, I would play blue and yellow and my daughter would play green and red. And so it would still go blue, green, yellow, red, blue, green, yellow, red. We'd still go in a circle. I would only play blue on blue's turn, only play yellow on yellow's turn. Otherwise the game is exactly the same. And you just add up your points at the very end and whoever has the lowest combined total is the winner. So that's how you play. All right, so let's talk about questions you could ask your kids. So at some point, your child is probably gonna run into a situation where they think they're out of moves, but they actually have a couple left over. And you could at that point say, you just take this piece and put it right there. You could rob them of that moment of thinking, but why would you do that? It's way more fun and way more thoughtful to give them half the information and ask them to figure out the rest. So instead of saying, put this piece there, you say, you can place this piece somewhere on the board. I want you to figure it out and then they're looking and it's like a little mini puzzle and they gotta figure it out and then they feel great when they finally find that spot. And then on their next turn, you can say, okay, you have a piece that fits in this area and I'm not gonna tell you what it is. And again, they're looking at all their pieces and using their spatial reasoning to try to figure out that, oh, this one, if I rotate it just so, it fits perfectly. And that is a fantastic question to ask because you're teaching them the game, but you're also teaching them a strategy that they'll use over and over as they play. Now, once you get to the end of the game, your child probably has a bunch of pieces left over that have been really annoying them all game long. And so you can ask them which pieces were the hardest to place. And they'll be like the plus sign. The plus sign is always the hardest place. Oh, I hate the plus sign. You'd be like, okay, how could we play the game differently so that you didn't have to worry about placing the plus sign at the end of the game and get stuck with it? And that might get them thinking about how they could arrange the order that they play the pieces so that they're not stuck with all these big, awkward, five square pieces at the end of the game. Now, they're not only developing tactical skill with how do I place these pieces in these spots, but they're developing strategic ideas of how blockus should best be played. All right, and what about the end of the game? You're done playing and you just need to clean up. Well, at this point, a great thing to ask is, hey, let's forget all the rules of Blockus. Let's just try to fit all the pieces onto the board. Do you think you can fit all of these pieces somewhere on this board all at the same time? Now, this is legitimately challenging, particularly on a board that's already full of Blockus pieces. That might seem like it'd make it easier, but actually it makes it harder because there's all these spaces where nothing quite fits there. And I actually, I remember years ago, my son and his friend, they were both four, and it took them about 20 minutes of placing pieces and then breaking apart this part and putting it back together. And they were having so much fun just trying to figure out how to get all the pieces on the board at the same time and having such a great mathematical experience along the way. I love that activity. It's a great way to finish it up, clean up the game, and then you're done. As you can tell, I have a lot to say about this game, so look out for an upcoming video where I share even more stuff. In the meantime, if you guys play this game and your kid comes up with a really cool strategy or has an aha moment, I love to hear about that sort of stuff in the comments. And as always, you can sign up for my newsletter to get a game recommendation every week. The complete archive is at my website, gamesforyoungminds.com. So enjoy Blockus and remember to play games and ask questions. I'll see you soon.